In this lecture, we'll learn how the lives of galaxies are connected with the history of the universe and the three major types of galaxies and how galaxies are grouped together in the cosmos. The image in the background is called the Hubble Deep Field. The size of this piece of sky is about the size of a grain of sand at arm's length. The Hubble Space Telescope looked at this tiny region of sky for 10 days. Every spot you see is an individual galaxy. Imagine if there are this many galaxies in a random spot of sky the size of a grain of sand, just how many galaxies must there be in our universe? We actually estimate that there are about 100 billion galaxies in the observable universe. The lives of galaxies are long. To understand the life story of a typical galaxy, we have to look for different galaxies at different life stages. This is no easy task. Most of the galaxies near us are about the same age. To study young galaxies, we have to look back into the universe's past, which means looking to great distances. Remember, the farther away we look in space, the further back we look in time. So when we observe galaxies that are very far away, we see them as they were when they and the universe were young. The relationship between a galaxy's age, its distance, and the age of the universe makes it impossible to consider the histories of galaxies without at the same time considering the evolution of the universe as a whole. The study of galaxies is therefore closely connected with cosmology, the study of the structure and evolution of the universe. Galaxies are so beautiful. If you have the time, look at the Hubble website gallery. You can enjoy the wide variety of gorgeousness our universe has to offer. If you look at galaxies long enough, you're likely to agree with astronomers that galaxies fall into three major types. The three major types of galaxies that we see are spiral, elliptical, and irregular. First, let's look at spiral galaxies. Spiral galaxies have a thin disk that extends outward from a central bulge. The bulge merges smoothly into a halo that can extend to a radius of more than 100,000 light years. Spiral galaxies have two distinct populations. The disk population, which includes stars of all ages and masses that orbit in the disk of the galaxy, and the spheroidal population, which consists of the halo and bulge stars. Lenticular galaxies have a disk like a spiral galaxy, but have much less dusty gas. They are intermediate between a spiral and elliptical galaxy types. Elliptical galaxies differ from spiral galaxies primarily in that they have only a spheroidal component and lack a significant disk component. Elliptical galaxies come in a wide range of sizes from the rare giant ellipticals to the dwarf ellipticals which often have fewer than a billion stars. Elliptical galaxies contain very little dust or cool gas, therefore there is little or no star formation within ellipticals. Ellipticals often look reddish in color because all the massive blue stars have died away. Some galaxies are neither clearly spiral nor elliptical. These irregular galaxies are a miscellaneous class encompassing small galaxies as well as larger peculiar galaxies that appear to be in disarray. The astronomer Edwin Hubble invented a system for classifying galaxies that organizes the galaxy types into a diagram shaped like a tuning fork. Elliptical galaxies appear on the handle at the left, designated by the letter E and a number. The larger the number, the flatter the elliptical galaxy. An E0 galaxy is a sphere and an E7 is highly elongated. The two forks show spiral galaxies, designated by the letter S for ordinary spirals and SB for barred spirals, followed by a lowercase a, b, or c. The bulge size decreases from a to c, while the amount of dusty gas increases. Lenticular galaxies are designated S0. 
Astronomers had once thought the Hubble sequence was an evolutionary sequence in which galaxies flattened and spread out as they aged. But we now know that this is not the case. The evolution of galaxies is much more complex. Edwin Hubble knew this from the beginning. So how are galaxies grouped together? Well, most of the galaxies in the universe are gravitationally bound together with neighboring galaxies. Spiral galaxies are often found in loose collections of up to a few dozen galaxies called groups. Our Milky Way is part of the local group, for example. Elliptical galaxies are particularly common in clusters of galaxies which can contain hundreds and sometimes thousands of galaxies extending over more than 10 million light years. I will leave you with this Hubble image of the peculiar galaxies of ARP 273. Their distorted appearance is due to gravitational tides as the pair engages in a close encounter. From our perspective, they look like a lovely flower. In fact, if you are looking for a creative something to make your sweetie, you can put this image on a card. It's a unique way to give someone you love an amazing cosmic flower. Take care. I will talk to you soon.